There are two keys in a transition probability matrix. First is the set of all possible states that we have, and then second is the probability itself of transitioning from one state to the other state. We have talked about the probability, but we haven't really talked about the state itself. So in this video, we're going to look at those states and classify each of those states based on their characteristics. So we are going to use this Markov chain example to um, see the classification of states. So you are given the graph and also the transition probability matrix. So from the graph, although they look like we have two systems here, um, actually this example talks about just one single system. Okay. Okay, so let's start with the first term, reachable. So if we look at the example, we can say that, for example, state 5 is reachable from state 3. Um, this is the case because um, at least there is one way to go from 3 to 5. So 5 is reachable from 3. So if you start from node 3, there is at least one way that will lead you from 3 to 5. Formally, we say that um, a state J is reachable from state I if there is a path leading from I to J. And then the definition of a path is that uh, it is a sequence of transition that begins in I and ends in J such that each transition in the sequence has a positive probability of occurring. So in other words, um, there is an arrow that you can see here because you see the probability is not zero. So that's why um, here it says has a positive probability. So informally, you can uh, think about like what I said earlier. If five is reachable from three, it means that there is at least one way to go from three to five. Um, another example is that we can say state five is not reachable from state one because there is no path that can go from one to five. The second term is communicate. We can say that state one and state two, they communicate because informally we can see that from node one, you can go to node two and from node two, you can find a way to go back to node one and so on. Um, the formal definitions is that um, two states are said to communicate if J is reachable from I and I is reachable from J. Another example is that state one and state four, they do not communicate because there is no way to go from one to four and there is also no way to go from four to one. Now, there is a set of node that we can call it as a closed set. So for example, the set of nodes one and two, it is a closed set. The formal definition is that uh, a closed set means that there is no state outside of that set is reachable from any state in S. So if S1 here, one and two is our closed set, it means that there is no state outside of one and two that is reachable from these two nodes, right? You cannot reach node three, you cannot reach node four, you cannot reach node five. So looking at this example, you can say that, so the set of S2, three, four, five, is also a closed set. Yes, it is, because there is no nodes outside of three, four, five, that is reachable uh, from any state in this set. You cannot reach one, you cannot reach two. So three, four, five is a closed set. Now there is a state that is called absorbing state. So now let's take a look at the gambler's ruin example. In this example, state zero 
is an absorbing state. And then we'll see later that the set of node 0 is also a closed set. So let's talk about absorbing state first. Absorbing means that if you are already in this state, you cannot go anywhere else than that state itself. See, because the arrow goes from 0 back to 0 itself with probability 1. So once you've reached that node 0, you will always be in that node in the next time step, in the next next time step, and then all the time steps in the future. So uh, formally, an absorbing state is defined as um, the state which PII equals 1. So the probability of transition, transitioning from state I to state I again is 1. So you can see in this example, you have 0 is an absorbing state. And also the state 4 is an absorbing state. And then in this example, the set of the node 0 by itself is a closed set. Because um, once you are in the, this node 0, there is no nodes outside of it that is reachable from 0. You cannot reach 1, you cannot reach 2, you cannot reach 3, you cannot reach 4. So 0 by itself is a closed set. Um, the similar idea happens for node 4. So the set of node 4 by itself is also a closed set. From the same example, Gambler's Ruin example, let's talk about transient state. So state 2 is a transient state. The reason is that suppose now you are in state 2, there is a possibility that you go away from state 2, let's say 2 to 3, 3 to 4, and then you find yourself trapped in state 4 forever. You cannot go back to where you started, which is state 2. So state 2 is a transient state because you can go away from that state and there is a possibility that you cannot come back, you cannot return to your original state, which is state 2. So the formal definition is that a state I is a transient state. If there exists another state, let's call it state J, that is reachable from I. It means that you can go from I to J, but state I is not reachable from state J, which means that once you go from I to J, yes, you can go from I to J, but then you cannot return from J to I because I is not reachable from J. So this state I is a transient state. In other words, you can think about like this state is just temporary. You are temporarily there, but once you leave that state, there is a possibility you may not be able to return. So state 1 is also a transient state, and state 3 is also a transient state for the same reason. There is a possibility that you leave this state and you may never be able to come back to where you started. Now, if a state is not transient, it is called a recurrent state. So recurrent simply means it is not transient. Okay, um, so this is the definition of a transient state that we just discussed in the previous slide. So we can see from this example, state 4 and state 0, they are recurrent states. And they happen to be absorbing states as well in this example. But uh, remember, it's not always the case. So um, recurrent state, the definition is uh, just, it is not a transient state. So let's take a look at another example to define periodic and aperiodic state. So in this example, state 1 is a periodic state with the period 3. The reason is that if you start at state 1, the number of steps that will take you back to state 1 is a multiply of 3. 
So let's try it. So you're now in state one. You go to two, one step. You go from two to three, that's the second step. And then from three, go back to one, that's the third step. And then on the fourth step, you go from one to two, fifth step, two to three, sixth step, three to one. So you see that uh, the number of steps that take you back to state one is always a multiply of three. Three steps, six steps, nine steps, 12 steps, and so on. That's why state one is called periodic with the period equals three. So in this example, state two and state three, they are also periodic with the same period, which is equal three. So formally, a state is called periodic. If um, k is the largest number, is the smallest number, sorry, is the smallest number such that all parts leading from state i back to state i have a length that is a multiple of k. So in this example, k equals 3. So the number of parts that lead you back to where you started is always a multiply of 3. 3 steps, you go back to 1 again. 6 steps, you go back to 1 again. 9 steps, you go back to 1 again. Then remember, k must be strictly greater than 1 such that the state can be called as periodic. And then if a state is recurrent and it's not periodic, we call it as a periodic state. So here's the first question to check your understanding. So this is the Markov chain that is taken from the example of choosing balls from an urn. So the statement is that the state 1, 0, 1 is a transient state. Is it true or false? As usual, I will give you a pause on the video to give you some time to think, and then I will give you the answer after the pause. The answer is true, because you are here, 1, 0, 1, there is a possibility that you leave this state and you will never ever be able to return. So for example, you go from 101 to 002. And then from here, whatever you do, wherever you move, you cannot go back to 101. So 101 is a transient state. Still from the same example, another statement says, 002 is an absorbing state. Is this statement true or false? I will give you the answer after the pause on the video. The answer is false. 002 is not an absorbing state because you can see that the probability from 002 to 002 itself is zero that is not um, following the definition of an absorbing state. Remember that to become an absorbing state, the probability of transitioning from a state to itself must equal one. So the third question, all states in this Markov chain, they're all recurrent. Is it true or false? I give you the definition of recurrent state and transient state. You may think about the answer during the pause on the video. The answer is true, because all states in this example, they are all recurrent, they are not transient, because for every state, you can always leave that state and then come back again. There is no way that you are unable to go back where you started. So for all nodes here, you can always leave this node and then find a way to come back to that node. That's why all states here, they're all recurrent. 